Dr. Joshua Giles, who is in Minnesota. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing pretty good, man. Thank you for having me on your show. So I'm excited oh. to be here. Oh, man, I'm so grateful. And, so, you know, for everybody that wanted to tune in the other night, we tried to do this on Facebook and ran into some technical <laughs> difficulties. Um, <laughs> right. But uh, really, I think our heart behind this, and I'm so grateful that you're willing to jump on, our heart behind this is to share uh, a little bit of what God's doing and what's actually happening right now. Um, it's, it's happening all across America, but specifically, we want to focus in on Minneapolis and what's happening there on the ground. And I'm sure a lot of you have heard right now uh, things that are taking place on 38th and Chicago. And, you know, I have been inundated with uh, the good, the bad, the ugly, the death threats, and also, uh, you know, I don't know, there's just so much controversy surrounding uh, this, you know, I'm going to just call it a revival, because I mean, I think that's what you call, call it when people are getting saved and healed and delivered and set free. Um, Absolutely. But uh, we were a little bit of the backstory is I was planning on, you know, we had been involved in what's happening in St. Louis and several other cities across America. I have a lot of a big heart for the city of Minneapolis and, um, you know, been pouring in there for a lot of years. And I had heard about this outpouring that was taking place um, on the street corner where George Floyd was killed. And um, I had people have been sending me the testimonies and stuff. And it just just I just moved my heart. Really, I wanted to see it for myself. Um, just be a fly on the wall. Really, it was all I wanted to do. And Anyway, I got invited by some college students to, uh, to, to come and do an event at the, uh, at the campus there. And, uh, <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> it's all good. Got invited by some students to, uh, to go to the campus um, down the street and, and to do a worship thing. And it ended up, long story short, it ended up being too many people that wanted to come, not enough security. And there were some threats that were happening. And a lot of people that just didn't feel safe. So we canceled that or postponed it. And uh, I ended up coming in under, uh, under what these guys were doing. And it just is so phenomenal. And what's interesting about it, it's all, you know, it's kind of almost always God when it's controversial, you know, it's like, it's like whenever the Lord is moving in such a dynamic way, uh, especially in the midst of the tension that we're feeling in, in America right now, you know, I have, you know, people that are liberals that hate it that I was there because I'm white and white savior and whatever, all that stuff. And then I have conservatives that hate it that I was there because, uh, you know, they were trying, like we were trying to worship, I don't know, worship George Floyd as a, you know, as a hero or something. And neither of those, uh, you know, narratives are accurate. <laughs> And uh, I was so stirred. I just want to say this. I've been around the world a lot. So has, you know, um, Joshua. He's been around the world a lot. And, you know, I have never seen what we experienced on that street corner. I have never seen it in America. I mean, the openness, the power of God, the, the baptisms that were taking, a, taking place, how the Lord was taking a place of trauma and pain. And he was bringing such hope and and. and and, and, and life back in, into the city, into the street there. And so I am just so honored. I, I was behind the scenes most of the night, sung a song and, and just supported this band and this movement. I think it was the ninth night in a row. It keeps going. I got some text messages last night from the pastors that there's more people getting healed, more people getting saved. But anyways, enough about that. We want to hear from you, Joshua. We want to hear from your heart what the Lord's doing in Minneapolis, a little bit of your journey. What are you seeing God do? And uh, so grateful to have you here. Well, thanks again for just having me on. This has uh, been a journey, uh, you know, for us. And what we're seeing here on the ground in Minneapolis is uh, something tragic, uh, of course, that happened, but uh, God getting the glory even in, in the middle of it. And so, as you stated, there's been controversy on um, just all surrounding this uh, revival, uh, but the Lord is moving so much, you know, in the midst of the revival. And uh, what we're seeing, uh, as you stated, we're seeing souls uh, saved. We're seeing spontaneous baptisms. Uh, you guys have seen videos go around of many of the baptisms that have happened. And I was sharing with you uh, just the journey on how we got here. And, yeah. uh, you know, I'll speak to just some of the listeners as well. So I'll tell you, 
uh, some of the problem and then give you the hope and the solution that we're coming into now. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, what we've seen on the ground, I've been living in uh, Minneapolis for about seven years now. And uh, I actually moved here uh, from North Carolina uh, to plant a church and to pastor here. And uh, the Lord was so uh, just urging me that I had to come to this area and I've heard this story from others who are around as well, uh, but the Holy Spirit said to me, you've got to come there because there's a move of God that I'm preparing. And so when I first uh, came to the area, I started traveling here about 11 years uh, ago before, uh, before I moved here seven years ago. And uh, the Lord gave me this prophecy back then and everywhere that I would go, every church that I would go into, I prophesied this, that God said there will be a day where the eyes of the world is on Minnesota. And out of whatever would happen, we didn't know what it meant, what would happen, but he said out of it, a revival would start that would go throughout the nations. It would start here in Minnesota. And I met other pastors uh, who have been here for so many years and shared that prophecy with them. And they had words from God that were very similar to that. And they began to say the same thing. We heard this in our prayer time that it was gonna be a revival that would spark here and go throughout the nations. And so we're, we're beginning to see this now. Now, going back to the beginning of this, of course, uh, you know, I, we, I think one of the things that we're learning to do as a church, and we may have differing views on different things, but what we have in common is Jesus Christ. What we have in common is we're part of the same kingdom of God. And so there are many Christians and believers with different views on this, different opinions, and uh, that's going to be this way until Jesus returns. And so what I'm, what I'm now seeing, though, from the moment that I moved here, uh, you know, I myself experienced racism uh, from day one. And I'm from North Carolina, and I grew up in a diverse background with friends of all different races and friends that were from different cultures. And so I was a bit stunned when I moved here to see some of the racism that I experienced. And this was in different sectors of the world. And I'm not the type of person to just uh, go and complain about something and just make up stuff about it. I mean, it was real. Uh, two days before uh, George Floyd was killed, I was exercising in my neighborhood and I live in a predominantly white neighborhood. And I was exercising there right here in Minneapolis. And uh, one of my neighbors called the police on me uh, because apparently they thought I was a suspicious person. And so, I mean, these things exist. And I want, I want the listeners to know this because when we talk about revival, and it is happening, uh, yeah. it doesn't mean that there are still not problems or situations that we're working towards fixing and that we are still uh, doing the practical things, the natural things, and also the spiritual things to see uh, the climate completely shift and change. And so I, I also want the listeners to know that the cry that you're hearing from my community uh, for as a whole, it's not a cry of uh, blaming, you know, just a group of people or trying to blame this one or that one. It's a cry that's saying, hey, uh, there is some racism in the systems that we're seeing and it's around us. However, uh, we want, you know, acknowledgement of it and we want the systems to change. And so we're seeing the start of, of those things change. And I'm one of those pastors that have been here on the ground, standing at the forefront, pushing for revival with all night prayers and worship uh, services and going out in the city, taking teams to do prophetic uh, declarations and acts over the city. And we've been doing this for years, uh, but I've also been standing for reform and for change within our city and also within the nations of the earth. And so I believe that God is causing this revival for many reasons, but one of the reasons is to spark a reformation because revival is only the starting point. You know, once yeah. we experience this revival, it snowballs into a reformation where we will see systems change and we will see many changes that happen. And I want those that are in uh, the church community to uh, just realize that we don't have to panic with some of the things that you're seeing in the world, uh, but God has hope for us. And as long as the church, the salt of the earth is here, uh, we are going to be that change that we are talking about, praying about, believing God for. And that's why I'm coming on to programs like this, you know, where we can talk about what the Lord is doing. But since that tragedy with George Floyd, uh, we've seen, uh, of course, I was a part of peaceful protests. I was a part of 
uh, some of the initiatives here. But then there was a moment in prayer where the Holy Spirit said to me and many other leaders that now it's time to shift into revival. Wow. And so when that happened, uh, we immediately went to the streets. We started with bringing uh, food because many of the stores were burned and um, a lot of the stores were destroyed. There were a lot of outside people that came in, destroyed the stores, uh, different hate groups that rose up and destroyed some of our things. Uh, but the community came together in a way that I have never witnessed before. And I'm talking about black, white, Hispanic, Asian. Everybody came together in uh, different parts of Minneapolis to bring food uh, to the areas where the stores were destroyed and the buses were shut down and people that didn't have transportation couldn't get food. And we were uh, giving thousands of dollars a day worth of food in so many of the communities. And so it started that way. I had guys that were driving in from uh, Wisconsin and Iowa and even someone that came all the way from uh, Georgia and they came to me and these are people, black, white, all races that came up to me uh, while we've been out serving and they said, how can we help? What can we do? And so we just started putting people to work that were asking to help and they were giving out food and praying over the people. And I had my head intercessor uh, at our church said to me, uh, I have never prayed for this many people in, in the last few years. It was so many people that we ministered to. So that's how the revival started. It started from so many churches just going out into the streets and uh, with compassion and love and helping each other. And then we also noticed that uh, God was just using uh, humanity as a whole. There were people that were walking up. They didn't care about our political standing. They didn't care about your background or what you believe about this or that. They just stepped out and said, we see there's a need and we want to help. And so that's how the hearts of people became open to the message of the gospel and the message of hope. And so then things shifted onto the street where George Floyd was killed. And uh, from what I've heard, there are about 50 churches that have come together over the past few weeks to uh, bring that message of the gospel and that message of hope. And so I've been out there for days. Many pastors have been out there for days uh, preaching, proclaiming the gospel, doing evangelism. And so on the night that you came, uh, Sean, I, I, I heard that there was a group coming. I, I actually had never heard uh, uh, you, you specifically and had never heard uh, some of your background in music, but I know it was such a God connection to uh, be there and to have you there. And I'd heard of Bethel. And so I'm like, okay, this is awesome. You know, they're coming to bring this sound and it's going to be powerful. And it was powerful. You know, the way the Lord used you and the way the Lord used uh, that band there and uh, just the worship, I was out there really just to, uh, I was supposed to do something on the program and it got changed at the last minute. And so I said, I'm just going to stand out here and worship and just uh, <laughs> enjoy what's going on. I, and I, while I was baptizing people. <laughs> <laughs> All of a sudden I well, looked up and dunking people, man. <laughs> it wasn't the plan. So, you know, I was standing there worshiping and I was standing there with a few members of my church and the Holy Spirit said to me, go stand in front of the baptismal pool. And so I told the people with me, hey, I'm going to go down there and just stand in front of the pool and worship. And so I stood in front of the pool, not knowing that I would be baptizing people. I had no idea why I had to stand there, but I'm one of those people. When I hear that voice, you know, it's the Lord. I just move and just do it. So I stood there, started worshiping took out my phone, started recording some of your worship, and then just praising God and worshiping there. And spontaneously in the crowd, uh, one of the people got saved right there. And wow. they said, I want to be baptized. Wow. And so when that cry came, of course, they brought them over to the pool. And my back was still uh, uh, facing the pool. And I was just worshiping. And I heard the organizer's wife say to me, uh, can you come help? And so I said, absolutely. So I turned around and just started, you know, baptizing and one came and then another and then another and then another. And there wow. were so many people that night that came uh, just to give their hearts to the Lord. And, and this wasn't planned. And I want people to know that it's not one of those things where people are saying, oh, I'm seeing what they're doing. I want to go get baptized. These are people who happen to be there uh, <laughs> in that intersection and Crazy. they're just worshiping God or either they're drawn to the sound that they hear and the conviction of the Lord is coming on them and people are getting saved right there. And Sean, can I tell you, the spirit of prophecy was so strong 
uh, out there on those streets. There were Muslim guys that came around and they were watching what was going on. And some of them were looking at me because, you know, in Minneapolis, I look like them to some of them. So they were looking at me like, what are you doing? And so I heard <laughs> them and I turned to them and uh, they, one of them kind of started mocking what we were doing. And uh, the spirit of prophecy just came on me so strong. So I started prophesying to them and a couple of them gathered around listening like, what, what is he saying? And I started describing what the Lord showed me. One of them, I saw their family member and it was an uncle in their family. I saw his age range and I described how he looked uh, to them. And, and the guy said, yeah, that's my uncle. How do you know this? And uh, so I just kept going. I said, this is what I'm seeing and he has a heart condition, and I can see where uh, he has this heart condition and the Lord wants to heal him. And he said, well, how do you know this? And I said, this is Jesus Christ giving me a message to you and to your family because he loves you so much and wants you to know how much he cares for you. And he just listened and tears started welling up in his eyes. And, uh, he, and I asked him, I said, well, is this true? He said, yeah, my uncle had a heart attack and he's had this heart condition. And he said again, but how do you know? And so it opened the door for the gospel, seeds of the gospel to be planted. And uh, that's what we're seeing happen right here on the streets. And I'll be honest with you, you know, Sean, just like you, I've traveled to over 30 uh, nations. I preach the gospel in many different countries, uh, as well as here in the U.S. And what you're saying is true. We see this in other countries all the time. You know, when I go to countries in Africa, I see this. When I'm ministering in, I, I've ministered in Germany and words of knowledge for healing came and people received instantly and just jumped up and said, the Lord healed them. Uh, now we're seeing this on the streets in Minneapolis. And I believe it's going to break out all over the world, all over the world. <laughs> Come on. So, that is so incredible. Yeah, yeah. I, I keep hearing, you know, I keep hearing testimonies of the same thing from that night, you know, that you, that you explained, of course, I just was so wrecked because you know, I think like most Americans out there, and I mean, even people around the world, you know, we're just pounded with this nonstop uh, fear mongering, uh, violence inciting media that just shows us that America's burning and that, right. and that right. there's so much division and people are fighting and, and, and there's riots. And I know that, that some of that stuff is happening, but I mean, part of my heart and even why I wanted to come was just there's another story that God's writing. Like yes, there's a story yes. that God's writing. And, you know, I, I really want the church to, to grab onto this. I feel like, um, you know, only in 2020 would it be controversial to worship and bring the gospel in a very place of pain and trauma. You know, I mean, right. it's kind of astounding to me that even some of the pushback has been from the church. I'm like, no, this is actually the response from the church. Now, it doesn't mean, like you mentioned, that it, it doesn't need to, that at some, at some point and now, it needs to move into reformation. And, you know, even a quick note on that, uh, I, you know, I was on a conference call today with the White House and uh, Veda King was on there and, you know, uh, Senator Tim Scott, and they're working on this police reform bill and they're, you know, uh, doing away with the chokehold measure and they're talking about how the police in Minneapolis, for example, we're, we're, we're on a 40 year old uh, police uh, um, conduct plan. It was 40 years old. They had never updated wow. it, you know? And wow. there's many cities across America that haven't updated their policies and their standards. And, um, you know, I think that, uh, and, and so there's a reformation coming on that end and we wanna be involved with that. You know, I feel like, you know, the common misconception is that this worship or this revival is a deflection from real action. I, I believe from what I hear from you, that's not what we're saying. We're saying right. that the two actually go hand in hand. But, right. but I will say that there's a spiritual component. You know, we don't fight against flesh and blood. And that there's a conspiracial, spiritual component. Uh, the enemy is trying to rip this nation apart right now. And, you know, I was just doing a teaching today on John 17 and how you know, the very last words of Jesus before he goes to the cross, the, the crux of the gospel, if you will, you know, he tells everybody, you know, my, I, I wish that you would be one, you know, as me and the father, one. my desire is for unity, my desire is for you to be connected together in unity. And I just feel like right now in this season, you know, I, I feel like we're on the precipice of an amazing move of God and that attack of the enemy is against that John 17 command. 
you know, that we would be one. And so I, I'm, I'm thankful that we, that we can, you know, peek our heads above the noise of the trauma of what we're seeing. And we can actually be like, oh my gosh, like God is actually moving. And it is actually a multi-ethnic, multi-racial, very diverse thing. And the common denominator unifying everybody is the fact that we believe that Jesus is the hope. You know, we yes. believe that Jesus is the hope. We believe the presence of God is the answer. And so I, I don't know, maybe you can even touch on that a little bit. You know, I think it's, it's helpful for people that are caught up in, in various movements. And, you know, I, I believe Christians, millennials, you know, we have a justice, God-given justice thing in us. We want to fight for something. We want to, we want to stand on truth. And um, I, I want maybe if you could just touch on how you see the presence of God, what we were seeing happen down there, which is still continuing. How do you see that tying into the justice element? And what would be your encouragement? Well, you know, it's, it's all, I believe, connected, you know, as you stated. And uh, what we're seeing happen in the nation uh, as far as uh, systems being torn down, understand that for some, it is very uncomfortable to see things look as though they are in an upheaval. Uh, but what I have learned is in the midst of, of this, sometimes God will allow for things to be torn down so that he can build them back up. And so what one looks at and thinks, oh man, this is destruction, the nation, or it's just everything's being blown up. Uh, the Lord will use certain uh, incidents and use things in order to bring in his kingdom agenda and in order to bring in his purpose within the earth. And so, you know, I, I just believe that as a church, um, we, we should begin to look on what is God's kingdom agenda in the midst of this. And I do believe that God's kingdom agenda, you know, intersects with uh, a human rights agenda as well. And so it's, it's certain basic um, equality things that we know and we believe that every uh, person uh, should have certain basic uh, human rights. And I think uh, what we're beginning to push into in the world, it's not, and I, and I don't want to throw people off in the church world when I say this, and I'm a pastor, so I've been in this for a long time, but it's not a religious thing that's happening. You know, right now what we're beginning to see is God moving in the world. And sometimes things have to get worse before they get better. And there are times where uh, things uh, get a little rocky before something beautiful begins to emerge out of it. And so I believe that that's what's happening right now. And uh, we're seeing an upheaval. We're seeing things kind of shaken and every system is going to be shaken. And you know what, Sean, for those that are following my ministry that have been on this page, uh, there was a, a prophecy that the Lord gave me back in September of last year in our Bible study. And we put out the recording some months ago and uh, it was uh, almost one of those prophecies of warning. And uh, the spirit of God just came on me and I began to share with them what I saw for 2020. And God said to me, there was a shaking coming in 2020 and this shaking was going to hit every system of uh, the government and every system of the world. Uh, and we would begin to see what looked like panic and pandemonium in uh, our country and our nation. And that recording is up on my page uh, since September of last year. And he said we would even see it affect. Tell them um, how to get your page. Tell them uh, how you they can, get it. You can go to Joshua Giles Ministries uh, on Facebook. And if you look up Joshua Giles Ministries, you can scroll back. Maybe we'll share it again. But it's uh, been posted maybe a yeah, few yeah, yeah. months ago and then a few weeks ago. Good. Go ahead. I think I missed something there. No, no, no. You... Okay. Go, go. Okay. So it was posted a few weeks ago. And, uh, the, and a few months ago. So we're reposting it so people can get it. Uh, but the, the Holy Spirit spoke even about the economy being hit uh, in the nation and the global economy. And this was at a time where uh, everybody was saying, nope, the economy is going to be great. Nothing is wrong. Nothing's going to happen. So I got a lot of flack behind that uh, prophetic word for sharing it, but it was a warning. Now, the, the last part of the prophecy said, even though we would see panic and, and pandemonium in, in our nation and in the world, God said it will be a sign that one of the greatest revivals that we have ever seen is emerging. And so we, our church held on to this uh, word. We prayed over it. We just believed. And so when we came into 2020 and we started seeing some of these things happen and it literally turned into an upheaval and panic and all this stuff, 
we said, okay, we know what's going on in the world, but let's hold on to the revival portion of this that God said. And yeah. so uh, I'm excited about seeing this revival right now. And it's not just a revival for the church. There's not just a revival in uh, the streets, but this is also a revival that's hitting the systems of our nation. And we will see things being torn down and rebuilt in the nation uh, across the board. And so that's really a message of hope. We don't have to be discouraged when we see it. Uh, my One of uh, the mentors that I looked up to uh, coming up in the prophetic uh, was Kim Clement. And he used to say this phrase all the time in his uh, School of the Prophets. He would say this phrase, uh, he would say, find the dynamic in the demonic. And he would say, when you see the demonic, look for the dynamic in the midst of it, because God is always there. And the Bible says that the pure in heart shall see God. And that doesn't mean that when we get to heaven, we're just going to see him. That means that if we keep our hearts right here on the earth, we'll see God in everything, in the midst of everything. Even when there's calamity, we'll find God somewhere in it and find what he's saying in his message of hope and his message of the gospel in the midst of that. That's amazing. I, I love that. I mean, I, you know, I'm an optimist uh, at heart. I, I, I believe that, that God always has a plan. And I got to admit, man, like leading up to my time in Minneapolis, I just was super bummed, you know, but I, yeah. I mean, not only have the pandemic, uh, which has just crushed people's lives and uh, but, you know, then this this thing happened and it was like, it just felt like there was so much tension and there was so much, uh, I mean, especially I think it's hard to like some of you guys, if, if, if social media, you know, if you're on social media, it's just like, it, it is just <laughs> insane, you know, and so right, seeing right. it with my own eyes, it was interesting because I've had a couple, um, you know, interviews with different reporters and they're coming out with you know, pieces on this, who knows their slant or angle, or I don't know, you know, right. I just told them what happened. But, you know, the thought came to me, because, you know, uh, one of them was asking me for a pretty well known outlet, they were asking me, well, you know, why would this, like, why in a season like this, would, would you want to, you know, why would there be a thing called a revival? Why would you want to go to a place like this? See, and I, I explained to her, you know, what's interesting is it feels eerily similar to the late 60s or early 70s. And, you know, mm -hmm. I wasn't alive then. Uh, there might be some people on this page that remember those days. But, you know, in, 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 the, in, the, in the height of all of that uh, unrest and the political climate and you know, wars and rumors of wars and, and, and there was just this crazy season, you know, God had an answer and it was the Jesus People Movement. And, um, oh, yeah. and that's a movement that I studied a lot, you know, where it just broke out and, and the presence of God broke out and, and churches were planted and hippies were saved on the beach, you know, uh, people strung out on LSD and, you know, riots literally turned into revivals, you know, in that right, season. Right. I was explaining that it feels like to me right now that this season feels eerily similar to that one where, yeah. you know, we're getting, I mean, since this night, I mean, yeah, we've gotten so much backlash, but at the same time, man, we've gotten testimonies like from what's happening up in Seattle at uh, Chaz or CHOP or whatever they call it now, they changed the name, the autonomous zone. Like people are invading that zone, bringing the gospel, healings and salvations and signs and wonders are happening up there in Seattle. And it's breaking off in, you know, in New York and Manhattan right now. And, and, and we're just seeing the reverberations. And so, I really feel like your word, you know, that, that God was going to use Minneapolis, you know, with the enemy meant for evil to broadcast yeah. trauma and to, and pain because it's, it's real, man. Like the pain is real in people, you know, as, yeah. as they watch that, 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 that horrible scenario uh, play out, but that God would have a plan of divine redemption. And Oh, yes. So I'm so yes. grateful that you are, are bringing that, that you're on the ground, that you've been just so faithful. And I would love to end this time if you could just pray over everybody that's watching that what God has deposited in that city and what you're helping steward would become a reality where we all live. Yes, absolutely. Uh, Father, I just thank you for this opportunity to meet and discuss and to share uh, your word. And Father, I pray right now that for every listener for every state that's represented every country that's watching father we pray that revival would start it's starting here but let it begin to spread all over the nation 
in every corner of the nation. We pray now, Father, that the four winds of God will begin to blow this revival, yeah. that the yeah. fires of revival stir. And Father, I just thank you now that we'll begin to see miracles like we've never seen before. Father, I pray that souls will begin to come into the kingdom like we have never seen before. Let this be the beginning of revival reformation and awakening at the same time father we know that we're in this unusual place but let this unusual place give birth to the next dimension of the kingdom let it give birth to the next wave of outpourings of your spirit father you tell us in joel chapter 2 that in the last days yes, we would see god. the sons and daughters prophesy and Father, I pray that there would be such a prophetic dimension that is stirred up within your people that you begin to release uh, gifts of the Spirit even in a greater way that we would see words of knowledge and wisdom and miracles and healing. Father, confirm your word as we are preaching the gospel and going forth into many areas and cities and nations and worshiping you in, the, in these places. Father, let signs and wonders confirm your word and let people hear the gospel and receive, let hearts be open in Jesus' name. You know, I, I just sense that there are some of you watching and the Holy Spirit is saying to me that he's gonna use you as a catalyst in this revival in your city. And there are some of you that are saying, well, I wanna be a part of that. Should I come to Minneapolis? And you don't have to fly here, but the Lord says that there is an impartation that you're about to take even from this uh, uh, live right now that we're doing. There's an impartation that you're about to take with you and spark it in your city and in your town. And I hear this clarion call to go out into the streets. And that's what I hear the Lord saying, go out into the streets and worship, go out into the streets and proclaim the word, go out into the streets and prophesy, go out into the streets and minister. And as you do, you will see souls come into the kingdom and many healings and salvations manifest. That's the word of the Lord that I hear in Jesus name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My <laughs> God, I'm excited. I'm stirred up. Uh, you have come to stop on. me, Sean, because I'll keep prophesying. <laughs> I just feel that so strongly. There's an anointing of healing that's being released right now, Sean, that we haven't seen uh, in some years. There are many of us that operate in uh, healing ministries. And while we were on the streets, even when you were there, uh, there I was prophesying to someone and a lady was standing in the way of, of that prophecy. And the anointing hit her so strong, she came with an injury that she had had for some time that was painful to touch on her wrist and arm. And while I was prophesying to someone else, she was just in the line of sight. She got hit by the power of God so strong, she turned to her husband and said, oh my God, I'm being healed right now. And instantly the pain left her. And so there are, there are many testimonies like this that we've been getting right there on the streets and, and it's going to continue. It's going to continue. Wow, oh, man. I love that. Gosh, you just made my day, man. And I know <laughs> so many people, uh, this is such a breath of fresh air. It's amazing how the presence of God and the testimony of Jesus, you yes, know, the testimony Lord. of Jesus is a spirit of prophecy. It's amazing yes. how it just cuts through the noise. It cuts through yes. the app. It cuts through the, the opinions and it just brings the truth. So I thank you, yeah. bro. I appreciate <laughs> thank it. You, we'll definitely do this again. Absolutely. And everybody, please, if you're, if you're watching, jump on uh, to, to his page. See the, 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 the prophecies. If you want to support what's happening in Minneapolis, support my brother here. He is amazing. We're so grateful for you, man. Thank you for giving thank your you, time. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Bless you, man. Bless you.